Japanese bloodgrass. One thing I'm going to talk about today is how the towers and other garden fixtures are put on stones. So you see he raised the level by two or three levels of masonry brickwork. That makes the tower a little taller. So they have wanted this three-dimensional aspect to the garden. So it's more at eye level instead of instead of like looking down at everything you are more immersed in the garden and to help cover that he put a boxwood in front so that will grow out that's the plan that's why that plant is there so this is actually probably one of the more level areas of the garden but you'll see it's it's much more three-dimensional if we look over here you'll see what I mean so in this garden you're not a giant looking down you're more a, a hobbit walking in the garden so you are within the garden and so that lava rock tower is about six feet tall and more lava rock there, the side of the driveway. And the lava rock has different colors. It has reds and blacks and tans, contrasting with the greens. This is a beautiful tree. It's a deodar cedar called feeling blue compared to that blue spruce it's not blue right now Theodore cedars are like my favorite tree just so beautiful it's cascading down over the lava rock what a beautiful mix of, mix of textures and colors In the background, you see a yellow spruce, blue spruce. And burning bush. And even the pine tree now, you see the yellow in the pine tree? Those are leaves that will fall in a few weeks. So it's giving us lots of color. Now we come down to this Japanese lantern and often you will see these planted at that ground level. So if you were, this is what it would look like. You'd be walking by looking at the top of it. But it's on this one or two ton rock that was placed here by a forklift and then the lantern was placed on that to give more of three dimensions and even still that's a big Japanese lantern that top piece the second one down would take at least two people to put into place It's about two and a half feet across, four and a half inches thick, very heavy. I think that's uh, the similar blue fur to the one out back. Some of the uh, leaves are going dormant.
you see the tips of those trees are turning yellow. And this is a canidafolium, dancing peacock, weeping spruce. And we haven't even entered the main part of the garden, but here we are getting some nice fall foliage. And we're getting some nice shapes, some rounded conifers. Henneke cypress. Dave likes to shape these. There's probably 20, 30, 40 of these in the garden. Japanese maple starting to give more color. A variegated holly. Uh, prune spruce. It just it gives the eye something to find interest in. These different geometric shapes. Then you have just the round shapes. This is bird's nest. It's going to be a low-growing conifer, so it doesn't block the view of the distance. Right there was a very large tree that was cut down. He used some cement blocks and uh, looks like a juniper. So a trunk doesn't have to be a negative. So it's early in the morning, actually mid-morning now, and so we have the sun coming from the east. Last time we talked about this, Weeping Blue Atlas Cedar, 40 years old, creates this wall to the garden. Different kinds of Henneke Cypress, David shapes them. He adds driftwood sometimes, makes it look more like it's an older bonsai. And he shapes them with multiple arms into globe shapes. Here we have the entrance. This conifer, don't have the name for, is about 30 years old. It's right in the corner here and it has grown to fill in the space. And lots of rock, pots, stones, copper pots, cement pots. He does have to water these in the summer. There's another shaped tenneke. Beach stones, different colors. But I want to focus on this pot right here, the cement pot. And it's a partial match with that one. He did not want two of the exact same. But instead of just being a pot on the ground, he has raised it with masonry blocks, three or four high. And yes, those masonry blocks have gray and pink brown, which matches the pot. So this again gives you height. So it's coming up to about five feet. Instead of just everything being one level, this is a very three-dimensional garden. And on this side as well, you have those masonry blocks and then you have the pots on top. 
So it creates a gate, it creates an entryway. And this pathway is made up of very nice stone, large flat stone interrupted with beach stone. Beautiful patterns. These are all purchased from nurseries. So each one is different. Each of these stones is different and they have been put in expertly. So we've entered into the garden and we have two smaller pots lower down. So in this garden you're not, your head's not always pointed down at the plants. You are also looking up and you are looking at eye level. And we are seeing now some fall color beginning. Another Henneke cypress. This is the trunk of that weeping blue atlas cedar with some lichen on it. You can really see that because it rained yesterday, the trunk is wet, and you see these beautiful cascading branches. I just can't tell you how beautiful this is. Here we have a small water feature, the sunlight. is falling on the watered plants. And we have a little breeze. Ringing the bell. And again, this whole path is individually placed stone, large, medium, small. Um, it's just fascinating to be in this part of the garden because if you walk five feet and turn your head again, there's a totally different picture. Here you have cascading pots, rocks placed. There's a border of medium-sized flat stones. Then it slowly builds. And you have towers, statues, and trees. couple of just regular boxwoods. And so we've just come in from this entrance and you have the amazing Buddha and then you have this very large stone sort of uh, serving as this anchor for this whole section here. This is a ruby autumn moon maple. Siryu is that Japanese maple right there that's over the large pond. And this green maple is just starting to change.
Again, the path is made of very large stones, three feet across, three to four feet. And here we have this large water feature surrounded by stone and cement pot. And we have a pot on a stone in the lake, in the pond. The pond is rimmed with large stones. And I'm trying to get more of an overhead view of the waterfalls. One, two, three, four, five waterfalls in total. And this was all planned. Each each stone was placed as part of a plan. You have these ledge stones that the water falls over. And then you also have very large stones placed here. And you have this side waterfall right there. It's in the shadow. I don't know if you can see the water. Aconitifolium is just starting to change on the top. In a couple weeks, this will all be flaming red. There's two hawks. And then we're walking into the shady part of the front garden. And here we have a green Japanese maple, probably Veritas. And we are on the northwest side, so we're seeing the structure of the trunk and branches. Dave's advice is to open windows into the Japanese maples and also with this particular Japanese maple you do not have to cut out crossing branches so there are several spaces where branches from the right cross over to the left and they rub against other branches that's okay with this Japanese maple Every time I turn my head, there's a different picture. It's a different picture. And I try to go as slow as possible. On the video, I've noticed going as slow as I can is what makes the video come out better. 
for you all. Acanetifolium. You're really catching that color now. Vibrant red against the blue. We had cicadas last year, so we've had a lot of twigs dying this year. A lot of them sprouted leaves, but there was so much damage that the tree decided just to let those branches go. So we've had a lot of twig die back. And then if you come out of that shade area, I can feel the sun on my back. The Romans had a word for that, word for that. I believe it's called Aprilla. It's when you feel the warmth of the sun on a cool day. Aprilla.